Considering how much time we spend communicating, you'd think we'd have it all figured out by now. Communication challenges arise in all relationships because we have different communication styles, different expectations or preferences for communication channels, and different expectations for frequency and speed of response to emails. Even if you discuss communication styles, strategies, and preferences during your initial advisor meeting, you may find that issues still arise. Here are some tips on how to approach your faculty if you're finding it challenging to communicate with them effectively. When it comes to working with your advisor, communication is absolutely key. First off, I recommend asking the advisor, how do you like me to communicate with you? Is it phone calls? Is it email? If I do not hear from you within a few days, can I email you again? When it comes to communication style, advisors are as varied as any other relationship, any other group of people. I prefer if you don't hear from me in 48 hours, write to me again. A thousand things could have happened. Other advisors don't. And if your goal is to be the best advisor you can be, just like the advisor's goal is to be the best advisor they can be, that's only going to occur if you know what will make you the best advisee to your advisor. So talk about it. Let your advisor know your strengths, your weaknesses, and what you want to get out of the relationship. It really is like any other relationship, and the more you communicate, the more you're honest and straightforward, the better the advisor will be able to be for you. I discovered that a lot of students don't consult advisors at all. And I ask students, like, well, why didn't you ask me? Or, or if I found out, for example, a student applied for a job over at Scripps. Well, I know people at Scripps. I mean, why wouldn't you not tell me that you're thinking about doing that? And they'll say, oh, I didn't want to bother you, or I don't want to whatever, you know. And also students come from huge universities, like if they came from a Cal State or a UC, or they had to a community college and they said, well, we never had advisors, you know, nobody advised us, right? And a lot of students get advice from other students, and most often it's not right, or it may not be right for that student, right? So what might be correct for you in a program is not the same for somebody else. You know, for the whole Bilotti thing, you know, about qualifying exams and how you approach your research and these kinds of, these are the kind of things you need to talk to your advisor about. I had a student just the other day told me that she applied for a dissertation uh, fellowship. Well, she didn't tell me, and I should have read her thing when she didn't get it. But, you know, but I just think that these are the kinds of things you should have your advisor look over. But a lot of people feel I can do it by myself, and I don't need your help. But I think you see the consequences of that often. You know, when people feel like uh, I'm not used to asking people for advice. And I just think... That's a big problem. And I think people who come from, like, for example, maybe small liberal arts schools where they have an advisor, and the advisor is a major part of their program, is very different from, like I said, if you come from some big public school where they just give you a list and say these are the courses you need and good luck kind of thing. But I just think CGU is small. You know, and one of the things we pride ourselves is that we are a small, intimate type of institution where you can get hands-on and your advisor is and should be accessible um, to help you, you know, and I really like doing that for students. Faculty are really busy. Uh, faculty have their own research agendas. They have teaching. They have a lot of service around the university and in the profession. They have other advisees. And so, so there needs to be also, I think, a, a little bit of uh, grace and understanding afforded towards the advisor. You know, sometimes uh, we don't always get emails back to you in 24 hours and, and things like that. Now, of course, there's a lot of responsibilities on the advisor side as well to be as conscientious and responsive as possible. So, so really, open lines of communication are really important, and the student can help by setting the terms of the relationship from, from very early on, early on. You know, I've had students ask me, when, when do you prefer that I send you emails? I had a student who had done this whole analysis of, well, I found that when I send an email on Friday, I don't get a response till midweek of, you know, and, and it even figured out my email patterns. Uh, I always tell students, if you want a long response, send me an email on a Friday afternoon. <laughs> 
because it's not likely I'm going to get into a Friday night. And then I've got the weekend. Then I've got my, I'm trying to get restarted on Monday. So I would just have a frank conversation with the advisor about what is their preferred pattern, whether it's email or some other. Some people, some faculty members still like to get a written draft in their box by a certain date. Um, it's just, it's unique to each individual. First of all, time, timely, we all know that. So a good example, I can give you an example. Uh, you know, students need to get proposal ready two weeks, for example, two weeks, suppose, before the, to the committee. And then, you know, then you at least give two weeks before you send to committee, give your advisor to read, right? You cannot expect you send something in today and your feedback can give in two days because advisors, faculty are very busy. They're not just supervising you. There are many other students that are teaching their own research. So definitely have, you know, a reasonable uh, expectations on the timeline. And then, but, you know, you can, you can, if, a, if someone, you know, advisor holding your proposal for four, four months, not giving you any feedback, that's not reasonable. So pretty much um, email the advisor, say, uh, you know, this is what I have. But I think then, you know, give some, say, would you please be able to give me feedback by this, this, this time? If the, your advisor is very busy, they usually will respond, say, oh, you know, I, I probably couldn't have something, but I will give you by this, this time. So that's one thing always helpful. It's important to have open communication. I think that's the key to, with your chair, your advisor, and faculty, it's very important. I think it just depends the person. Sometimes for me, email's easier. I can answer a question really fast than people coming in, stopping me from doing other projects. I think this also works somewhat with my faculty. Making appointments with us, um, letting us know up ahead of time, I need to talk to you about a sensitive matter or saying, you know what, I'm not sure that I want to talk to you about it. Can you give me the right person to talk to? No one gets offended about that. We want you to succeed. So whatever helps you, we can help you do it. Although faculty sometimes can seem unapproachable because of their, their professional degrees, because they're the, the big smart person in front of the room, I think that um, the, the best thing to do is to start by talking to them after class, by beginning the relationship in a way that's not a big commitment in time. You can, you can establish the fact that they're approachable. And I think the warm reception you get when you come up to ask questions helps to set you up then to have a more formal advising talk or even talk about your interests in research and ideas years down the road? I think that it's a good idea to meet with the advisor in person from time to time, even if that's not what the advisor says is their preferred mode of communication. And even if it's not the student's preferred mode of communication, I think there's significant social science research that shows that, you know, personal communication actually has a different effect than other kinds of communication. And so it's a good idea to come see actually meet in person periodically. And of course you can do that one of two ways. Almost every professor has some office hours and so you can just show up, but also you can make an appointment and that can be a way to make sure that you stay in touch. It's also, there's a lot of work that certainly can be done through email though. And so you can specifically ask professor, your advisor, how they feel about email communication or other types of texting. I don't know that most Faculty want to text with students most of the time, but email is fine. And of course, there could even be phone calls, though th those are rare. <laughs> in our department, it's really easy because it, the students' work goes on in the studio and the faculty are there in the hallways. So you're always crossing paths and running and it's just showing up, um, doing your work and, and being ready to talk about it. And you don't even have to be ready to talk about it because you'll get questioned and have to reply. So it's pretty, it's pretty simple. When I think of students who are good communicators with me and my role as an academic advisor, the first thing I think about is the fact that, uh, first of all, that they make the time to reach out to me to make appointments. That's always a really exciting thing to have happen. And I also think that they do the work before they come in. Um, I think that they walk in knowing where they want to go, what they want to do. I can help them with a lot of the other questions that will follow. But having done that self-reflection and that research before we meet is ex extremely effective. And it really allows us then to use the time together to then resolve the, the questions that they haven't yet been able to resolve on their own. For faculty relationships, I think that the most important thing is to establish the relationship early on when you have a certain faculty member in a class. And I think a relationship that's predicated on common interests um, and on your enthusiasm for their research, for the um, 
the classes for the areas of interest for the profession, that's a great way to get a, to strengthen and build a faculty relationship.